Hi, this is Jason Shadrick with PremierGuitar.com, and we are here with John Harrington, who's playing guitar for Steely Dan, and we're going to walk through the rig that they're using on their summer tour. So, John, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us. My pleasure. Good to be here. So, let's start with uh, with your guitars. So, what right. guitars did you bring out on this tour? Well, I suppose this is this is the one I use the most. It's a it's a Gibson CS336 with a few little changes. Um, we keep the truss rod cover off because I <laughs> have to, <laughs> have to adjust it a lot? hit that a lot. Uh -huh. yeah. But uh, basically it's got some pickups by a guy named Jim Rolfe, a Kentucky guy. Um, and you'll notice the asymmetrical knobs. Um, that's not how Gibson makes it. The, the knob used to be here and the switch used to be here. But especially because this guitar is a little smaller than a 335 uh, size, the... Uh, you know, the pickup selector is too close, and I was kind of like knocking it uh -huh. when I didn't want to and switching pickups unintentionally. So I had somebody switch this spot and also made this a master volume control. Oh, okay. So so it's handy. It's, it's you know, kind of almost as close as a Strat one would be, you know, mm -hmm. not quite, but uh, it's, it's easy to get to, and I, I ride the volume control quite, kind of a lot on this gig. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it's handy for that. Um, this is a dummy control now, and these are the two tones, rhythm and and uh, treble. So uh, it's just three, three working things and the switch is out of my way, but still easy enough to get to. So and, uh, and what strings are you using on these guitars? These are all Ernie Ball strings and uh, they're 10 through 46, whatever it is. 48, I forget what it is, but it's, the, it's, their, it's actually their, uh, it's the same set of strings I used to use when I was a kid in high school. Um, they're the, the pure nickel wrap ones. They, they call them rock and roll slinkies, you know. And uh, they're not as bright as the stainless steel ones that they that most of the companies make now, and so they they seem to sort of stay the same over the life of the string, which isn't long on this gig. It's pretty much every day we change them. So uh, on this guitar, at least, because I use this one more than the other guitars. But uh, yeah, they're they're they're, they're still my favorite strings after all these years. Uh, so um, and is this a fairly recent model, not a vintage yeah. one? Uh, no, this is a, the 336 is only, is a fairly new guitar. I mean, it, it was uh, I think. I probably bought this in 2002 or 2003, something like that. Uh, and it was the first year they had a regular issue of this. It's a custom shop guitar, but but they were sort of making them and just distributing them to stores. And so mm -hmm. I saw a couple in uh, New York where I live and, and finally picked this one up. So this is an old telly that's, uh, I'm not even sure it was two pieces from the same guitar originally, but uh, it's been through a lot, a lot of fret jobs. And, and as you can see, some pickup changes. This was my favorite little mod though that Roger Sadowski did for us it's like the music man ones you know yeah, yeah. so the the, tr the truss rod adjustment is right there right and you don't have to ever take this off anymore so with your truss rod adjustments what what kind of conditions lead you to messing well, with that know, a lot we were playing outside in the summer where it's uh, these guitars sit in the trucks you know overnight sometimes and it's you know it's got to be like 100 degrees one time I got that 336 out of the out of the truck and this, these are these strange waxy deposits all over the top of the top of the guitar, which meant the truck was hot enough for paraffin to melt because it was the it was the stuff that the, the pickups had been potted in. Oh, you know? wow. <laughs> it was dripping all over the guitar. So you know these things go through hell out yeah. here. So so they're they're you know the and temperature and humidity changes with all the travel. So you got you got to be kind of monitoring it all the time. So so I do a lot of that. But this is this is a lifesaver that thing. Anyway, it's got different pickups. These are I think these are. Van Zant pickups, these two, um, sort of like Strat style pickups. Um, and there's an extra middle pickup that was added, of course, because that's not a stock telly thing. But I use it a lot, uh, actually alone. So the pickup wiring is different now. The, uh, this is the rhythm pickup alone. This is the center pickup alone. This is the, the stock Fender telly pickup alone. Uh, and if I want to get that the outside two, which is, which is usually what you get in the middle position of a, of a three position Tele switch, I put it in this position and I pull this up, and that turns this pickup on with this alone. So then I get the two outside ones, which is cool. And you can, you can hear that if you want. There's the stuck uh, rhythm pickup sound. There's the, the twangy treble pickup, and then and this is the, this is the middle. Yeah. So, so it's, a, it's a different kind of tone from from this one, which is. Uh, this one and that one together, the outside yeah. too, you know. That's, uh, but that's a useful one too, so, so you can get them all, which is very cool. So. Mm -hmm. And what tunes in the set do you uh, do you pull out the telly for? Well, the, the, the big one for this one is uh, A19. Yeah. You, know, you need the 
twangy sound for that. So, yeah. so that, that kind of helps. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the, the, the Gibson is, is, uh, is better for stuff like, uh, you know, like the stuff Larry Carl played, of course, mm -hmm. on all those, you know, all those records and uh, the fatter tone stuff. You know. so, uh, so that works too. Also have a, a Les Paul here. This is a recent acquisition. It's like some 70s uh, vintage uh, Les Paul Custom, which I had very high frets put on, which, which I liked. But I like the ebony fingerboard. But the, the frets that come on them originally are so low that you can barely play them. I mean, it's, you can't bend strings on them. They're very strange. So, and I'm not comfortable with that. So I had, had new frets put in, and, uh, and it works great. It's a um, very different, very fat-sounding guitar. You can hear it right away. With the, uh, so it's got a bigger, you know, bigger thing. I've got the uh, amp uh, attenuated a little bit right now, so it doesn't sound quite the same. But uh, I know those stock pickups in that. Mm -hmm. These are uh, no, I don't know what was in them when I got it. So I put um, these are Lindy Fraylin's uh, most recent sort of PAF kind of style pickup, and uh, and I like them. Otherwise, it's pretty much normal, except the, again, the master volume is here, okay. and this is a dummy control, and these are tones just like, like the 336. So, uh, so that seems to be like a signature John Harrington well, me, mod. It works better. I mean, I don't know. I, you know, you can't do that funny thing with the with the toggle switch. You know, yeah, like that. Yeah. that. <laughs> but uh, but to me, it's so much easier to uh, to just you know you you don't get caught like switching pickups with the volume down or up. You know, so. Just, it just seems safer, and, and, I, and because I ride it a lot, it's I kind of, it's my way of monitoring where, you know, how hard I'm hitting the amp and all that. So, you know, if you if you watch me, it's, it's I've always got my pinky on the thing. <laughs> it's like too much probably, but uh, but it, but yeah, that helps us helps me a lot. So the first thing I go into is this tuner. Uh, we didn't used to do that, but we found that uh, with with the particular uh, signal chain I had here, we needed the buffer that's in there. And of course, you know, it's not a true bypass, but also there's a buffer in it that keeps the signal uh, pretty strong as it goes to the amp. Uh, so we start with the tuner. It's in bypass mode so that uh, I can actually see it when uh, when I'm playing. You know, the sound. You know, you don't have to. It, it's on all the time, and so I can see it um, if I can't hear well and uh, I'm bending a string and I want to make sure <laughs> I get to the right note. <laughs> I can do that if I need to. Um, and you know, to, I can use the next thing we go. To, let's see, where does it go next? It goes into the uh, this problem solver here. This is an RC booster, and uh, you can see I have two of them on the board. But the, this one I use only when I switch to the Tele because the Tele is so much uh, has so much lower output compared to the Gibson guitars that it it hits the amp completely differently. So to make life a little simpler and to keep me from having to run back to the amp to change the volume and all that, I just uh, when I just make a habit when I when I switch to the telly, that goes on. But it it's set for just a boost that compensates for the lower output of the telly. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's the second thing we go through. Uh, we then we go into this this Vox Wah. It's a it's a pretty fancy one with lots of bells and whistles. But uh, I just kind of I got it taped up so that it stays in the same position. The knobs don't move and uh, and it's just. Uh, it's just a simple, uh, I use it on a pretty stock, stock, uh, you know, the simplest sort of, I guess, vintage, you know, patch or whatever. It's not really a patch, but, you know, the setting. And, uh, and um, don't use it much, but uh, it's there when I need it. Uh, let's see, after that, where are we going? We go, it goes to the volume pedal. It's just a standard Ernie, Ernie, volume, Ernie Ball volume pedal, which is mono. And uh, out of there, we go to this other... RC booster, and um, that one I have set so that it's, uh, well, ba basically, because I'm not using any overdrives, and I don't, I don't use the gain on either of those boosters, um, again, they're just sort of problem solvers for me, I'm using the amp for all the gain, um, so when I switch, but, but generally, because I'm mostly soloing on the treble pickup, I have the amp set for the tone I like on the treble pickup, mm -hmm. but there's a couple tunes uh, where I need to use the rhythm pickup to get the appropriate sound to solo on. So, because when I switch to that, well, you'll hear. I mean, if uh, 
if I set the amp is sort of set for the treble pickup, uh, you know. So it's got some bottom, and if I switch to the, uh, if I kept all that the same, and then uh, it just gets still too much on the bottom. It's, this pickup's a little hotter, I guess, and it's it, it's just too much. So so this just I have it set to suck out some of the low end, and so then anyway. When you do that, it sounds more like the thing because it wouldn't work the other way. It's a little too fat. This, so I, I have the treble up on it, and the bass is cut. Mostly it's cutting bass, you know. But and the volume's staying about the same. So. Uh, yeah. That's the way it works. So, so uh, and then uh, let's see. The next thing we go into is uh, the front of the amp. That green cable goes all the way to the front of the. The, we're, we're into the amp called the Bluto Tone now. Um, and then there's an effects loop that comes out of the amp. So back on the board here, we, uh, the signal comes back from the effects send into, when we go into this uh, Tech 21 Leslie imitator, the Roto Choir, which is a pretty good one. It's, it's a new one for me. That kind of almost acts a little bit of a chorus pedal too, right? Sort of in that phase, you know, you, you can you can you can speed it up and, and slow it down. It's got a you know that ramp thing, but uh, but the, and I don't use it much, but there's occasional times when that seems like a cool sound. So uh, you know, so it's got that, and then uh, but that's in the loop. Uh, this first thing in the loop. Then we go to the this tremolo pedal. I got them all taped up so it's just so the settings don't move from day to day. But you don't have any like super secret settings you're trying to keep for yourself. I'm not trying to hide anything. This is uh, this is just uh, you know tremolo, which uh, the Voodoo Labs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, occasionally use that, but not much. These are things that you know went one tune in per night. Maybe they get you know, they get stepped on for a minute or something. Um, let's see. From there, we're going into the this boost delay. That's a Tech 21 delay pedal with uh, a high a, a tone control, so you can cut the high end. So I, I keep it on almost all the time, and um, and you can hear. I'll, I'll turn the reverb off, and I'll turn that off. That's that's the dry signal. We're here in the room uh, echo, but but uh, you, can, you can hear it. It's kind of a real short, short kind of dark delay, and. You can almost you almost don't notice it when it, especially with the reverb on, would you? Yeah. It doesn't really uh so it's but it kinda gives it more it just gives it a little space, a little bit of uh length, you know. So uh, so I almost always have it on and the reverb almost always stays on, but we, we jumped ahead a little bit. From the delay, let's see, it looks like we go to the it's not set up in order, it's just set up for convenience to step on, but uh so uh, from the boost delay, we go into this. Uh, this is an Ibanez modulation delay, which basically is set to, to do a chorus effect when I don't use it much, but once in a while. You know, like, uh, yeah. I don't remember it anymore. <laughs> you know, so, uh, and, and so I have some. I have that if I need it. I don't use it much again. Then uh, looks like we go into this uh, regular old Boss delay pedal, which uh, has probably hasn't been stepped on in a show for uh, for several weeks. <laughs> once <laughs> once in a while, but I just don't use it much. So, uh, and then uh, then it go then we go into um, I guess from there we go into the reverb pedal, and that's the last thing in the effects loop chain. So basically. It's pretty simple. There's a few thing, few items in front. The, the wa, you know, the tuner, the wah, I mean, the tuner, the RC boost, the wah, the uh, the other art, the, the volume pedal, the other RC boost. Then we're into the front of the amp. Then in the loop, we got the roto choir. We got the, you know the Leslie, the the tremolo, the the chorus, the the delay that I keep on most of the time, the long delay that I hardly ever use, and the reverb that is is on almost all the time too. The other stuff on this board are uh, channel switchings for the for each of the amps. This is the uh, a boost control for the Bluto Tone amp. This is uh, a channel switching control for the Bluto Tone amp, and this one is for the Guytron amp. It uh, just switches. It's a channel switching amp as well, and so it's 
A channel or B channel for that one, depending on which amp I'm in. I'm plugged into the Bluto tone at the moment, and this one is, uh, this is sort of, uh, you know, like a, it's, it's in that Dumble mode, uh, that Dumble style amp, and uh, it's, uh, it's an amp I'm getting used to this, this year on the road for the first time. Uh, it's, I, I found it originally a little harder to use than the Gytron, which I've used for like 10 years, but uh, but I like this very much. It's a, it's a beautiful sounding amp, has a beautiful clean sound, a big fat tone, and uh, it's, um, it's, it's a channel switching amp, but, it, but the channels are a little bit interdependent. Like this, this first volume control is always in, you know, when you switch to the next channel, that's still, you know, affecting your signal. So, so it's a, it takes a little, uh, a little getting used to to, to get, the bo get both channels dialed in right. But... Uh, uh, but it's it's a, it's an interesting amp, and it's a, again it's a beautiful sounding amp. So uh, that's that's what I'm in now. Uh, but the and I see you have it mostly on the rock, <laughs> the rock setting instead of the jazz it's setting. The rock setting, uh, yeah, it stays there. <laughs> and um, and we use the foot switch to change the uh, to to do the boosting and to change the to kick in the overdrive section of the amp. You know. It does have an effects loop uh, and a buffer for that effects loop, a tube buffer. That's this thing here. This is his loopulator, um, and uh, you know, so that, that takes a little getting used to too, because there are more controls there. But uh, but it's it's feeling pretty comfy now. But the amp is a 100 watt amp. It's a 6L6 style amp, and it's, and it's it's loud. So I found this very useful. I got uh, the THD hot plate to uh, so I can dial down the uh, overall volume and still keep the tone happening. And it, and it's it works really great. I, I almost always. Right now we're on the lowest setting I have on the THD because we're, uh, you know, we're not competing with anybody else and I don't have my plugs in. <laughs> but uh, normally I, I, I uh, have it down like 4 dB from, from wide open. So, but, but that makes a lot of difference because it, it would blow your head off, I think, you know, if you were up all the way. But uh, that's, so that's pretty much it. That's all. And what kind of cabinet are you using? Oh, uh, that's... Um, that's also made by Bluto Tone. The Gytron is, uh, again, it's been my workhorse amp for like at least 10 years now. And uh, this is the first one I bought. There's another one I have, uh, which is a little more sophisticated, but I left that home because I've got gigs with my own band and I need, need a good amp to play through on those. So, uh, so this one, um, it's a really interesting design amp. It's a 100 watt amp, but it has, uh, it has a real, it has a, an unusual twist. It's got two power amp sections. Um, it's a channel switcher, so the the, uh, the clean channel has these three controls. They operate completely independent of one another. So you know any settings on the first one don't affect the settings on the other one. So that's really handy and easy. Okay. It's uh, and then this master section has all the stock sort of controls that like a Marshall would have. You know, volume, treble, middle, bass, and and then it has an effects. Uh, this this controls. You know, this or series or parallel effects loop you want, but uh, I, I use it all the way up so that it uh, so that effects like tremolo, you know, you get the whole thing. It's not, but if you were just using delay or reverb, you could sort of use this as a as to dial in how much of you, the reverb and you could like keep the reverb and the delay on like no dry signal all effect and then just use this as to dial in how much you want it if you want to use it that way that's why it's built that way but uh, I just keep it up all the way um, so uh, but the cool thing about the amp is it's got two power amp sections and uh, it uses two EL84 tubes to overdrive the uh, to get your sort of tone from but somehow he's got an extra transformer in there he's got a, a dummy load going in there and it's complicated as you can see it's a big amp it's got a lot of tubes but uh, then that whole thing gets run into the master section of the amp, which runs on four EL34 tubes. Mm -hmm. so, and it's kind of voiced more like a clean, like vintage Marshall or something, like a 100-watt Marshall. So it's got tons of headroom and, and volume if you, if you want it. But if you just dial this you know, volume control down, we, we, could, we could play through it in like at whisper volumes, but still get the EL84 tubes to saturate as much as we want. You can really crank it hard. So uh, it's it's pretty amazing amp. This cabinet is a closed back one uh, with two actually unmatched uh, Celestion speakers in it. Um, it's, it was, I guess, Guy's way of trying to, you know, get a get a four by 12 sound, but in a smaller cabinet that mm -hmm. you could carry around easier, so. 
but it's it's great. It's got, got a lot of thump and it's it's a big it's a it's a great rock guitar amp. It's, it's it works great. These are uh, small Fender medium picks. They look they look uh, like just shrunken versions of the uh, of the standard uh, what 351 or whatever. I think this is 451. You know. Uh, is the number on it, I think. But they're, you know, they're, they're small. And the reason I like that is because, you know, I, I cover more percentage wise, you know, I cover more of the pick when I'm holding it. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it gives me a little more control. It doesn't slip out. You know, sometimes if you're strumming, like the whoop, you know, like halfway through the song, your pick is like, <laughs> is like slipping out of your, you know, it doesn't happen with these because I'm holding so much more of it. So, you know, I, I let very little point protrude, you know, but, uh, it feels like I'm kind of in, in better touch with the uh, with the guitar. I find I, even though I like heavier picks for for certain single note playing, I find that they just they feel terrible to to strum rhythm guitar. Like if you're trying to play something, oh, oops, sorry, to oh, scare me. You need a little give in the in the uh, in the uh, pick to sort of make it feel right and and to get right the right balance or something. It's just, so I'm just kind of just learn to deal with it, you know, mm -hmm. just like, uh, and grip it tighter, and then you get a little more resistance, like a heavier pickup, a heavier pick, you know, but. All right, well, so if people want to find out uh, what dates you're playing with Steely Dan or with your solo band, where should they go online? Well, the best place to look is, is on my website. It's uh, johnharrington.com, and if you think in threes, you'll find it. It's uh, www.johnharrington.com. C O M. So if you're thinking threes, you, you get there. No and uh, there's a touring page uh, on the website, touring tab you can click on. There are Steely Dan dates listed and there are John Harrington band dates listed. And uh, I'm going to try to keep that up to date and keep the calendar full. <laughs> so. All right, John, well, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. This is Jason Shadrick with PremierGuitar.com.